take a moment to examine these images. Do they have anything in common? Certainly not the art style. What if I told you that they were generated by an algorithm? Generative art transcends our typical understanding of what it means to be creative, as it requires a human artist who relinquishes some creative control. In this video, we will explore some of the mechanisms that allow an algorithm to invent something new and artistic. You will gain a framework of creating your own generative art, but don't worry, an understanding of advanced math and artificial intelligence is not required. But first, why would we want to use algorithms to make art? One reason is that they follow rules efficiently without becoming exhausted, giving them near endless creative potential. They can also harness chaos and randomness to generate unpredictable results. Ultimately, the strength of algorithms make generative art very compelling. Now you might assume that complex, compelling images are necessarily the result of complex rules. But actually, even simple rules can produce complex images. Perhaps the best example of this is a set of rules proposed by famous mathematician John Conway. Conway's Game of Life is a zero-player game that takes place on a two-dimensional grid. Grid cells start off as either alive or dead and may switch between these states based on the states of their eight neighbors and according to these three rules. First, alive cells with fewer than two neighbors die, as if by underpopulation. Next, alive cells with more than three neighbors die, as if by overpopulation. And finally, dead cells with exactly three neighbors become alive. Now what happens when an algorithm repeatedly applies these rules throughout the entire grid? Well, with the right initial conditions, unpredictable and often artistic compositions can emerge. By changing the initial conditions or the rules themselves, we can tr explore truly uncharted territory. Some other examples of emergent behavior are Langton's Ant, Flocking Simulations, slime mold simulations, and forming shapes out of randomized lines. Next, we will explore how performing computation, a core strength of algorithms, can turn chaos into compelling art. We'll start by borrowing the grid from earlier, and erasing all of the black dots. This time, we will pay special attention to the coordinate of each pixel of the image. What could happen if we treated each coordinate as the input to a function and the color as the output? For instance, we could use this function to color pixels in a rectangle. This distance function can color pixels in a circle. What about this third function? You might recognize this as the Mandel broad set, which is an iconic example of a fractal. So what is actually going on here? You may have heard that complex numbers are involved but for our purposes, they are just points on our grid. When computing each pixel, the algorithm visits a sequence of other points. The resulting color is entirely based on whether that sequence stays close to the center or escapes towards infinity in any direction. Now that we are ready to make fractal art, we can use a multicolor gradient instead of brightness levels. We can also add a bit of math to smooth the gradient. Finally, let's zoom in to admire the endless detail. While plenty of computation is involved in producing this animation, we can use GPU parallelism to render it in real time, especially since the pixels are independent of each other. There are many other ways to apply computation to generate art, including ray tracing, ray marching, particle simulations, and fluid simulations. Finally, we'll apply what we learned about generative art to an existing image. Let's say we want to turn this photograph into a cool watercolor painting. Can you think of an algorithm to do so? One property of such an algorithm is going to be randomness, since there are multiple ways to make such a painting. Instead of trying to produce the output all at once, we can choose a random starting point and add a random triangle. So far, we are not much closer to our goal, but we can do better. Let's use the color at the corresponding point in the image to paint our triangle. We've given our algorithm a way to make incremental progress towards our desired result, so now we can repeat the process and watch our painting take shape. 
An unfortunate side effect of reconstructing our image out of uniformly random triangles is that the result is blurry. One potential idea is to use an edge detection kernel to identify regions of the image with finer detail. We can use smaller triangles in these areas so as to preserve that detail. We can also control the direction of the triangles to align them with the fur. Finally, we can use our circle function to darken triangles near the edges to add a vignette effect. As you can see, generative algorithms are a flexible tool when it comes to image processing. Let's briefly explore other algorithms to synthesize images. One approach is to let an evolutionary algorithm draw circles and rectangles to create abstract paintings. A much more general approach is to train generative neural networks to replicate real images. If you are interested in AI, check out what OpenAI's DAL-E or DAL-E2 models are capable of. Thank you for watching this algorithmically rendered video on a fundamental framework for creating generative art. So, what art will you generate?